Hello everyone and welcome to Objective C for Noobs Part 3. And today we're going to be talking about the NS log statement. Now, what we'll learn today is a way to talk to or with our code, a way to communicate with our code and verify that the things we're doing are actually working. Um, we'll learn how to print out sentences um, and words and also how to print out the values of our variables, particularly the int variable that we learned about um, in the previous video. So before we begin, let's just quickly talk about what the NS log is. It's something that's um, called a function, um, and we'll talk about functions later. Um, the NS log, it takes in arguments, and then it uses these arguments to behave the way it, uh, it does. And the NS log, it enables us to, to verify that our code is actually working. For instance, when, when we set the values of our variables, we could print out that um, value of the particular variable and, and verify that it actually holds that value. So it also helps us debug um, because whenever you have a certain problem, you will actually place a lot of NS log statements in different areas of your code to help um, navigate to where the error actually is. So the NS log statement is used frequently and you'll use it a lot in your programming career. So without further ado, let's just get started. I'll create a new Xcode project under the OSX application, the command line tool. We're gonna name it yeah, NS log. Uh, there we go. I'm going to select the main.m file and then I'm just going to increase the text size. All right, there we go. So remember, this is how our um, template file actually um, looks like, and it'll look like this every time we create a new project. And remember, previously, when we established that everything between these two brackets here. Um, that were uh, actually our working space. So we are still going to write our code within these two brackets, but in the previous video, we just deleted these two lines here. Um, we know the first line here, that's comments, um, but then we have this, that's actually an NS log. You can see it says NS log, um, a parenthesis, trunk, and then a pair of quotes that spells hello world inside with an exclamation mark and then finishes off with a um, ending parentheses and a semicolon. And this is actually how the NSLog statement works and we can actually go ahead and run this program and the way we do that is we go up to the button up here in the upper left corner we press run see it says build succeeded and then this little bar pops up and there's two boxes, there's a black and a white, and we're only going to use um, going to be using the black one here. And you can see it also says all output here. Now, every single NS log statement we make will actually be printed out here. And you can see that by writing this line of code here, um, the NS log prints out the date, the time of execution, it says NS log, some numbers, and hello world. And hello world, that's actually what we put here in, um, inside quotes here, hello world. So we should be able to establish that whatever is between these two quotes would actually get printed out to the console. And this down here is what we call the console or, or the lock. And if it doesn't show itself when you run it, you just have to show it up here in, in the views. You can click this middle button and it will hide and show it. Um, and we can run it again, and you can see that it prints it out again. So we're actually going to go ahead and clear the workspace again. We're going to delete this. And then we're going to try and run again, pressing the run up here. And you can see that now it doesn't show anything because we deleted the NS log statement, so it doesn't print out anything. Um, there's also a shortcut for doing this. You don't have to press the run button each time. You can press Command R, and, and it'll run it as well. Um, when we press run, 
um, what actually happens is that we tell the computer to, to execute our code. Um, and there's actually two processes um, within this run process, but all you need to know is that when you press run, all the code you've written will, will be executed by the computer. So let's try and make an NSLog statement. And we make an NSLog statement by saying NSL, capital letters, OG, parentheses, trunk, a pair of quotes, and the parentheses. And now we're actually done with the NSLog. This is how the NSLog looks like. Um, and remember that whenever we were done with something, we always finished all with a semicolon, like this. And this is actually an empty NSLog statement. You can see that if we compare it to the previous one, we don't have anything between these quotes here. So let's put something in there. Let's say, I love programming. We press run, and you can see that it actually gets printed out to the console. And this is great because it's really that simple, and we can write everything we want in here. We can say, GUI GABUI. We can run that, and it prints it out. We can write um, numbers, letters, capital, and, um, well, basically anything. You can see that it just prints it out. So, this is great, but if we um, talk about what we learned the previous time, where we learned that the, um, the int was actually um, a variable, and that variable had a number. Okay, so let's make a variable. We start by declaring it. We say we make an int and we give it the name my variable. Finish it off. Then we assign a value to it and give it the value 10. Now, what if we want to print this value to the NS log? Well, that's actually easy because what we do is we put in the, the percentage sign followed by an I. Now, this here. This is called a format character, and what it says is that the percentage sign, it tells the NSLog statement that we are going to print out the value of variable here, and the type of vari um, variable is an int. The I stands for int, so an integer. So now we told NSLog statement that we want to print out the value of an integer variable. Um, but we also need to tell the NSLog statement which variable we're talking about because we could have multiple va variables and we can add a new one here called another variable and give that the value minus 250. So we need to tell the NSLog statement which variable we actually want to, um, to print out. And we do that by putting a comma after the quotations space and then the name of the variable we want to print out. And we want this to be my variable. You can see code completion also kicks in here. And when we run this, these two characters here will actually get replaced with the value in my variable. Let's try and run this. You can see that it does. It prints out the value 10. And what's great about this is that you can actually mix this. We can say a value is equals, then run this. You can see that it just prints out a value is, as we expect, and then it replaces the percentage, an i, with the value 10. And again, we can just specify another name for another variable here, um, another variable, and we run this, and now it says an, um, a value is equals to minus 250. And, and that's actually all there is to it. And what's actually, or what's also worth to mention is that um, the way that code is actually read is from the top down. So when your computer reads your code, it's going to read it line by line, um, starting from um, line one. So if we take in another variable here, what we call it third variable, and the third variable is equals to 233. Now, we can't print out this value in this NSLog statement, because when our computer looks at this statement, it only read these two variables. It has no idea that this one exists yet. So 
we, we, can, we can only print the values of these two, not this one. So if we want to print out the value of this one, we're actually going to need to make a new NSLog statement. Third variable. And then we can do it. It says the value is that, and it's 243 down there. Now, we can also see here that the NSLog, they actually put themselves on different lines. So for each new NSLog statement, you get a new line down, down here. Um, again, um, the code completion is also a great tool because once you write NSL, it says, well, are you talking about this NSLog function? Take something called a string. And yeah, that's actually it. So all you need to do is fill out the trunk, a pair of parentheses, and then the finishing semicolon. Write in the final NSLog. Whoops. And now we get three lines because we have three NSLog statements. Now let's just quickly talk about the NSLog statement again here. Oh, I'm just gonna move on this. The NSLog, I, I made this little breakdown to help you understand what the NSLog is really about. Now we talked about how we work with it and we made some examples and the best thing for you to do is actually just to um, start working with it. But this is how the NSLog statement looks. The NSLog part, the green thing here, that's the name of this function. Um, and that's, that's basically it. It's just what tells the computer that we are using this NSLog function and then um, the computer knows how to handle it or Apple made the code that handles it. We have the parentheses here in red. And what they do is that they hold the arguments that are passed in. Um, and by arguments, I mean they um, they hold the argument, the, the, the string here, um, the, the characters, the words, the sentences, um, the variables, um, the, the names and stuff. You know, we, we had, when we printed the value of variable, we had the variable name here, and that's an argument. And what we write in between these quotations, that's an argument. And it takes these arguments and puts it into the NSLog um, function. Now, these the trunk and a pair of quotes, you're going to see this a lot um, in future videos as, as well. Um, and that's something called an objective C string. Um, and that's just another way to say, well, words, sentences. Um, a string is actually just a series of characters all linked together. It, it can be words, sentences, or just a single character. And the semicolon indicates that we're done. And that's actually a breakdown of the NS log. Um, but we also made something that um, is called the format character and that's this percentage i and as I said before the percentage i it says take the value of variable and log to the console so this one here it says well I'm gonna take the value of an integer variable because we put an i here and I'm gonna log it to the console so this percentage i here, it actually replaces um, itself with a value that is stored inside the name that we pass in here. So this gets replaced with the value in this. Uh, well, given the fact that this my variable has to be an int variable and actually has a value. And that's actually how we work with the NSDOC statement. Um, I have a few exercises made up for you. And the first one is that you should print out the sentence, I love mustard, but also ketchup, to the console. So that's just as a simple and it's log statement. And after that, I would like you to print out two more sentences of your choice, uh, each in their own NS log statement. So you're actually going to have three NS log statements in your program now. Uh, the one you made up here and two new down here. Then I want you to declare a variable, an int variable, assign a value to it, and then print the value of that variable out to the console. So you make an int variable, give it a value, and then you print out the value to the console. And, and try to mix both um, the value 
of a, a variable with other words, for instance, this variable has the value something. And repeat exercise uh, three with two more variables and, and try out different numbers and um, some negative numbers as well. So make two other variables and print out in two other endless log statements. And that's actually all there is for um, this video, guys. Um, it's a little short, but there's not much to it. You just have to start using the endless log statement and make these exercises so you know how the endless log statement works and you can work with it. And then the more you use it, the more familiar you'll get with it. So um, that's it for this time, guys. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.